In this video, we're going to go over buoyancy. Buoyancy is essentially referring to the buoyant force, which is an upward force due to the pressure difference above and below an object. To see how this works, let's go ahead and draw up the situation. We have a container, a fluid, and within this container, we have an object. So what I'm interested with this object is the pressure above the object as well as the pressure below the object. So comparing the pressure on top versus the pressure on the bottom of the object. Now, remember when we're talking about the pressure, we have to consider the atmospheric pressure and the hydrostatic pressure. Now, the atmospheric pressure is constant everywhere, so that's not going to differ between the top and bottom of the object. The hydrostatic pressure, however, is directly proportional to the depth. So the greater the depth, the greater the hydrostatic pressure. And in this case, the bottom of the object has a greater depth than the top of the object, so that means the pressure below the object is going to be greater than the pressure above the object. And now if you think about it, if the pressure below is greater than the pressure above, then you're going to end up with a net upward force. And this net upward force is the buoyant force, which you can see is again due to the pressure difference above and below the object. Now, for MCAT, you are expected to be able to calculate the value of the buoyant force. And the equation is right here. Buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume submerged times gravity. Now, gravity, that's pretty straightforward, 10 meters per second squared. Density of the fluid is whatever the fluid's density is. The volume submerged, this one's a little bit trickier. So the volume submerged is defined by the volume of fluid displaced by the object. So what I mean by this is you can take a container filled to the brim with fluid and if you drop an object inside, some amount of water is going to get is going to spill over because the object got placed inside. The volume of fluid that spills over is the volume of fluid displaced by the object and that is the volume submerged. Now, as you look at this equation, it should look pretty familiar to you. If you recall in the last video, usually when we're looking at the weight of an object, we say f of g is equal to mg. But with fluids, we substitute mass for density times volume. So essentially, we get density times volume times gravity. This is indeed also the equation for weight. And what's important about this is Archimedes' principle essentially defines this equation. So Archimedes' principle states that the magnitude of the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So this is simply just the weight of the displaced fluid. So from this equation, we can recognize a couple things. Number one, the greater the volume of fluid that's displaced, the greater the buoyant force. Similarly, the greater the density of the fluid, the greater the buoyant force as well. All right. So to apply the buoyant force, I want to take a look at a couple situations. In one situation, we're going to look at sinking objects, and in the other, we're going to take a look at floating objects. So to start with sinking objects, we can draw a container, and we're going to have the object immersed in the fluid because it is sinking. Now, Often, when we're dealing with physics situations, it's helpful for us to draw out the free body diagram. So let's go ahead and draw in the forces acting on this object. We have the weight of the object, f of g, and we have the buoyant force. In this case, if our object is sinking, then the weight of the object has to be greater than the buoyant force. Right? The downward force has to be greater than the upward force in order for our object to be sinking to the bottom. So gravity is greater than the buoyant force, and what we can actually do now is expand what is gravity, what is buoyant force. So the weight of an object, we use density times volume times gravity. Right? That's the equation we came up with. 
buoyant force is also density times volume times gravity. And this is where you have to be a little careful because you don't want to write density times volume times gravity is greater than density times volume times gravity because that doesn't make sense. Those are the same thing. So you have to be careful. It's the density of what? It's the volume of what? So for the weight of the object, it is the density of the object times the volume of the object times gravity. This is greater than the buoyant force, which is the density of the fluid times the volume submerged times gravity. Now, in this equation, what we can see is that both sides have gravity, so we can certainly cancel that out on both sides. There's actually something else we can cancel out, and that is the volumes. The reason why we can cross out the volume on both sides is because objects that are fully immersed in fluids, such as this, they displace a volume of fluid equal to their own volume. So those two cancel out, and this really just leaves us with the density of the object is greater than the density of the fluid, which shouldn't be a huge surprise because it makes sense. If you want an object to sink in water, it should have a greater density than water. All right, and I also want to leave a note about that point that objects immersed, let's say fully immersed in fluid, displace a volume of fluid equal to its own volume. So essentially that the volume displaced by the object is equal to the volume of the object. All right, so this is for sinking objects. Let's now go ahead and consider floating objects. Again, we can draw the situation. We have some container with an object and our object is not sinking, it is floating. And similarly, we can draw out the free body diagram. What are the forces acting on our object? And again, we still have the weight of the object as well as the buoyant force. The buoyant force is still present because when you're looking at this object, it's not fully immersed, but it's still displacing some volume of fluid. And as long as you're displacing some volume of fluid, you're gonna feel a buoyant force with a magnitude equal to the weight of that displaced fluid. Now, what we can then consider then is, how do these two forces compare? Is one of these forces greater than the other? Well, if gravity were greater than the buoyant force, then our object would be sinking. So that doesn't work, we have a floating object. If the buoyant force were greater than the weight of the object, then our object should be flying out of the water, which is also not happening. So that means in this case, it's actually Newton's first law. These forces are canceling out. The gravitational force is equal to the buoyant force. And again, we can go ahead and expand this out. So you have density of the object, volume of the object, gravity is equal to the density of the fluid, volume submerged times gravity. And again, we're able to cross out gravity on both sides. However, we cannot cross out the volumes. And that's because this object, because it's floating, it is not fully immersed in the fluid. So it is not displacing a volume of fluid equal to its own volume. So we're really just stuck with this. Density of the object times the volume of the object is equal to density of the fluid times volume submerged. Now, while we can't cancel anything out, what we can do is actually rearrange this equation to give us something helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide by the density of the fluid on both sides and the volume of the object on both sides. Now it's going to leave us with density of the object divided by the density of the fluid is equal to the volume submerged divided by the volume of the object. This equation actually is pretty helpful to us because looking at this equation, 
Right here, density of the object divided by density of the fluid, that's the specific gravity. And volume submerged divided by the volume of the object tells us what fraction of our object is immersed in the fluid. So this type of equation can be helpful for MCAT questions where they give you the density of the object in the fluid and they want to know how much of the object is above or below the fluid. Or vice versa, they tell you how much of the object is above or below the fluid and ask you to calculate what is the density of the object. So as one example, let's take a look at this MCAT style question. The question is, what is the density of an object floating in water if 30% of the object is above water? Well, if our object is floating above water, it means it's not sinking. If it's not sinking, that means the density of our object cannot be greater than the, be greater than the density of the fluid. And since our fluid is water, which has a density of one gram per milliliter, I know we can get rid of C and D, all right? Because our object is not sinking. There's no way its density can be greater than water. So then we're between A and B, which we can now take advantage of this handy equation. So this handy equation tells us that the volume submerged divided by the volume of the object. Well, volume submerged, how much of it is below water? They tell us 30% of the object is above water, so that means 70% is below. And if we divide this by the volume of the object, which is the total volume, that's 100%. This is equal to 0 0.7, and this is equal to the density of the object divided by the density of the fluid, which is water, which tells us the density of the object has a density of 0 0.7 times the density of water, and since the density of water is one gram per milliliter, this tells us that our object, which is 30% above the water, has a density of 0 0.7 grams per milliliter. All right, so this is how buoyancy works, as well as a couple situations applying the buoyant force.